Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the Daily Office Selection. And for today, for Thursday, let's take a look at the lesson that's assigned for evening prayer from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, we're on chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem and to the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way to the, by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all the things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought by, among the Gentiles by them. Okay, so this story about, and, and this controversy about circumcision will come up again and again in St. Paul's letter. St. Paul keeps running into these folks in different communities who are insisting that the Gentiles, in order for them to really be Christians, must become Jews first, follow the Mosaic law, and that would include for the males circumcision. Uh, now, there's several issues Paul talks about. Uh, Peter's a bit more uh, direct about the it being a stumbling block, right? There's not a lot of adult males who are really going to be willing to have themselves, as St. Paul would say, mutilated uh, surgically uh, in order to follow Jesus Christ when it doesn't, it's not a prescription that Jesus requires. Um, but there are certain folks who think, look, you can't be a Christian unless you are a Jew first, and that's a part of becoming a Jew. Um, but Peter points out that God, the Holy Spirit, didn't make that 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 uh, dissension between the two, the differentiation between the Jew and Gentile, that he just fell upon either and gave them the gifts. So why should we, as those who are sharing the gospel, then add the burden of something else that the Holy Spirit didn't require of the Gentiles in the first place? Now, St. Paul goes on to talk about it in more theological terms in his various epistles, and I'm sure that's part of what this discussion is talked about that I just read from Acts and the, the disputations between them uh, as they came to that decision. Um, because, as Paul would say, the issue is, as Peter refers to it, it's about faith and that circumcision is a part of the works, like the phys physiality of being a member of that, uh, of, of the doing of the original covenant, which didn't save them. Peter says that, right? Peter said they were not, we, we were not able to keep all the law as Jews and the, before we came to know Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Why should we add a burden onto those who have come to Jesus by faith, not through these works, right? We're not saved by the works and the circumcision is a part of the works righteousness that Paul is trying to remind people that it's by God's grace through faith that we're saved. And so it's on belief in Jesus and our being reborn by the waters of the Holy Spirit, his work in, re in regenerating us, not our work in something like circumcision. So anyway, so it's why it's such an important issue that does come up. And we know Peter makes the definitive ruling uh, as the leader among the apostles uh, that, in fact, this is how God the Holy Spirit is working. So and anyway, so that, that's helpful to give you some background when you read about these in all of Paul's letters, why Paul is so insistent about this. Uh, so today's Thursday. A couple of quick things. First of all, today's the Feast of St. Peter and Paul. Uh, and so we give thanks to Almighty God for the 29th anniversary of the consecration of my bishop, the man who ordained me uh, a priest, uh, Bishop Keith Ackerman, now retired. Uh, but he ordained me a priest um, in November of 1994. But on, it was on June.
June 29, 1994, 29 years ago, that he was ordained, consecrated a bishop. So we give thanks to Almighty God for his anniversary of his consecration. Uh, so we will have Mass today at 9 o'clock. Uh, as we do every Thursday when I'm here, uh, not away on holiday or not away working at the youth conference like next week. So nine o'clock mass today and then four o'clock evening prayer. I do hope that you can join us in church or join us online. And may God give you a Thursday full of blessings. <laughs>